All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, um, we've got a news update style video. We're going to look at some spoilers and stuff like that. Um, and of course, what you see in the background, we will be checking out a uh, interesting new way to build the Blue Black Promo Sakazuki. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's not Navy. All right, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. That'll probably be towards the end of the video. In fact, let me give you a quick layout of the video so we can just dive straight into it because we're going to kind of be all over the all over the place in today's video. Excuse me. Okay, so first up, we're going to hop over to the lab and we're going to check out a game of Red Green Luffy versus Black Yellow Luffy. Okay, we got Luffy on Luffy violence going on. Okay, then we're going to go check out the One Piece um, main website where we're going to look at some uh, some. A release date coming out then we'll, we'll tackle that then then we will go over quite a bit of spoilers i think i have like 15 or 16 spoilers lined up from op09 and don't worry I, don't worry guys i'll have everything time stamped so you can skip past it if you don't want to see spoilers everything will be fine uh then we're gonna go over to the sim we're gonna check out three different games on the sim one of what you see on the screen here blue black sakazuki another uh, game of green yellow yamato and then another game of Red Black Sabo. Just some fun games. These are very random. Just stuff I've been working on. Stuff I've had in my uh, my video folder for a while now that needs to get out there. Uh, but yeah. Then we will finish off with the deck list of those three decks. And you know, just I'll give my final thoughts. And we'll uh, we'll wrap it up in that way. Alright, so you know what you're getting into guys. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and hop into it. Uh, first things first, we have a game. Like I said, let me move this leader. And ta-da. There we go. We got a game of green, red, green... Luffy versus black yellow Luffy. This should be very interesting. For those who do not know what the VV Lab segment of each video is, it is a community submitted video. If you are interested in me reviewing your game, all you have to do is record it, use OBS free software, go ahead and put it on um, YouTube. You could make it private where no one can see it unless they have a link. And then you will send that link to me on my Discord under the review my games tab. And then I'll put a, I'll put a thumbs up by it whenever I see it and I uh, add it to the list. And then you're, now you're in line. Yeah, I mean, it's that easy. I do one video of these a day. And it's been a really great addition to the channel because I'm able to analyze people's games free of charge. You know, I don't, I don't charge anything for this. And it's like I can I can analyze their games and tell them what I would do in that situation. It acts like a miniature coaching session. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, let's go ahead and dive into this game. Volume is off. Speed is on 2x. Quality's up. We're good to go. Now, as usual, guys, I have no idea who wins these. I don't know who these people are for the most part, other than the random people that are on my channel. Looks like we're going to pitch back the first hand. Let's go ahead and actually look at what we pitched back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not the greatest start, that's for sure. Yeah, so I do agree with going for a mulligan here, because these 2K counters are actually, they might as well just be bodies in this, in this game. So for those who are not aware, going into Black Yellow Luffy... Um, you know, we don't want to attack them very early on. However, we do still want to develop our board. So having these these characters here, it would be much better to have early plays. And it looks like, um, according to the to the log over here, you guys can't see it, but it looks like the uh, second we're going to go second as the red green Luffy player. This person is going to go second. Okay, and I say we again. It's not me playing this, but it's whoever submitted it. And we got a much better pool here. Actually, I, I think this is a much better hand than what we had. Kid and Killer is very good against this leader. And, you know, there might be some argument to go pretty aggressive since he did that right there. So, okay, pause. Our opponent is feeling so confident, I guess, in this, either in their hand or in this matchup, that they chose to take their own life on turn one with a Machino, setting up their next three cards. I would actually turn the, I would turn on the heat at this point. Now, of course, we can't swing on turn one, and all we can develop is this blocker, and I do agree with developing that. Okay, so go ahead and play out the... It looks like they're going to play out the Bluna. They don't have another play, of, unfortunately. But this next turn here, I would absolutely swing for five. Now, let's see what the Black Yellow Luffy player chooses to do. They're going to draw a card first. They're going to they're gonna get a uh, the ace. I think that is the rush ace they got. I'm, I'm not sure. It's it's ST13011. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. Wow, Flampe, Flampe. This guy is just completely um, sacking all of his life for advantage right now. Um, we'll see if it pays off. I could not imagine that it would pay off. And in this situation, okay, maybe we don't attack in this situation since they're at one. Yeah, I would probably hold off one more turn if I could. Now that Shariah can be massive if they don't remove it with a Luffy. Shariah is kind of the, the, the hard counter to Black Yellow Luffy's um, leader swing. However, they can pop it now that we're in OP07 with the uh, Rocket Boots Luffy. 
Okay, and let's see if that's what they go for. That that could be what they go for in this situation. They've played out a blocker. I guess they chose not to do the the effect. Um, let me pause this. They deployed um, the Imperial Ivankov. Yeah, and they did not choose to sack the life with Imperial Ivankov. They just want a blocker. So they're going to swing for seven, block out with Shariya, easy 1k counter out of this, of course. Or 2k. Yeah, two, a 2k counter is fine. It, it doesn't matter. Basically, you got out of a 7k attack with a 2k counter. We'll take it every single time. Okay, so it looks like we're going to keep developing wide with the board here. I think that's not a bad call. I don't think that's a bad call here. Nice. The, you know, the shanks is not bad. What were the other options, though? I do I do want to look at what options you had. Hold on one second. Let me see something real quick. Just given the matchup, I would like to see. Okay, so in this situation, we can only get... Okay, so either one of those is fine. Yeah, the Sanji's technically the better choice there, right? Because she can only grab film cards. And then in this situation, I guess shanks is pretty good. But you got to remember, the way the Black Yellow Luffy works is you're not going to be KOing anything. However, it is nice to have a big body on the board. If we even make it that deep into the game, I think Usopp would have actually probably just been the more practical decision here. Because next turn, we're swinging all in, right? Ne next turn, I think we have to go all in. Because our opponent is only on 5 Dawn, they'll be on 7 Dawn next turn. I I'm really curious to see what they're going to do this turn. Alright, and now we have some actual attacks on the board for next turn, which is nice. Okay, they're going to play out the Sabo. Draw two trash two. They'll fix some cards in their hand. We'll see what they choose to do with this. They're going to attach two to the leader. Swing for seven. Again, easy blocks here. I do agree with this. Yeah, give them a 2k. It doesn't matter. Because uh, we also have the other two cost blocker we could have used as well there. In fact, okay, so actually we should mention that. So that was probably technically a play mistake. We probably should have just given him the blocker there, the two cost blocker. And then we this turn we could play out and do whatever shenanigans we want with either Trafalgar Law or, or Kid and Killer. We have a lot of options because our opponent is at one life. And remember, we can stand our guy up with the uh, with our leader effect because we do have eight Dawn. So we could literally swing for uh, seven into their leader with our Kid and Killer and then stand him back up, swing for nine. Or excuse me, it'll be 10 on the swing back because he gets another plus 1,000. I'm not sure what, what all is in this list, but if Cavendish... If, if there's no Cavendish in here, I would definitely recommend going up a Cavendish. It just makes your turn so much more explosive, at least potentially. And again, he might have it in the list. I don't know what the list is, guys, just so everyone's aware. Looks like my camera's a little tall today. Hang on one second. <clears throat> there we go. That's a little better. Yeah, I don't see any problem with attacking here, honestly. Yeah, swing for seven. Let's get some cards out of his hand. Let's get some, uh, let's, you know, get these blockers off the board. Okay. So we swing for seven. What are they going to do? This is a tough decision. This is a tough decision for the Black Yellow Luffy player. I would take it. Taking it, I think, was the right call because we have two blockers here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they're just stacking their hand right now, which I do like, swinging in for eight. And now we can swing. I would, I mean, honestly, I don't think, yeah, I would swing. Like, there, there's no reason not to swing. They're going to probably use their blocker here, and then you can swing for five more with your leader. Sure, and now they'll use the blocker. It, it, I guess it was either or was fine. Okay, I don't know why they wouldn't use the blocker in this situation. Because you have no more relevant swings. That was odd, right? That was very odd. They could have used the blocker for, for a free uh, defense there. But hey, sometimes that happens, right? It, it, it slips your mind like, wait a minute, I could have just used my Sabo to protect that. But at the same time, maybe they were using that to fill up their trash with the exact cards they need for a future Gecko Moria. Maybe. Hard to say. Hard to say. And they trash. Okay, they've got some good stuff in their trash. But I think next turn, we can just go for broke. Okay, right here, I would definitely use my two-cost blocker because we need to put another card on the board. That That's where I'm at, you know, per, like that's where I'm looking at right now. Yeah, give him this easy blocker here, the 2K, or the two-cost. Okay, or you could just counter out of it. That's fine, too, if we just want to keep what we have on the board. But hopefully, let, let me pause. I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. I would want to play out that kid and killer, right? Because that kid and killer is just value town, right? Because we could just play him out, swing for seven, stand him up, and actually just pass our turn if we want to. We don't have to do that, but I'm saying that is an option. But we can play out the kid and killer, smash in for seven, stand him up, smash in for ten, and now we're getting cards out of hand, we're getting bodies off the board, and then we've kept our entire board active, and we're sitting behind a Shariah where they can't really just finish us off. We're at three life, and we have two 2k counters in hand. Um, I, I feel like we'd be okay there. Who knows? Maybe not. We, we'll have to see. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So they did choose to counter out with the Shariah. And now the Shariah will be a 9k for the rest of the turn, or a 10k for the rest of the turn. Or 9k, or something like that. Yeah, 9k, excuse me. 
Okay, so let's see what we do here. Looks like we're considering uh, putting some Dawn on the leader. This is why I think those, um, by the way, going back to what I was saying earlier, this is where the 10 cost shanks, it's dead in this matchup. It doesn't do anything because they constantly bring back their, um, wow, this guy, this guy that we're playing against, I don't understand why they're countering out of these when they have three blockers on the field. I truly don't understand. They have one life to spare. They have 7,000 base power. All of your characters on the field are 5,000 or less, except your one blocker, which we want to keep online. We want to save that blocker for later. And and they're just not... Uh, again, I don't understand that. Because this is the perfect opportunity to get your Sabos back in the trash and to clear up some space on the board for your Gecko into double five cost. Well, double two cost into double five cost, obviously. Okay, so here we go. We're going to swing seven into seven. Why are we not... Why is this guy not using his blockers? I'm so confused. Okay, very good. He used one. Now we, now we have to pass turn. We, we don't have any more attacks. That's what I was saying. There was no reason to block out of those. Or, or to counter out. We could have just blocked. Okay, I guess he doesn't have a Gecko Moria. Maybe that's the situation, guys. So the player on the top must not have a Gecko Moria. Which, hey, it, it is what it is, right? That does stink, but it does happen. Shirai, of course, is going to be able to get out of this very easily. Again, I would just be giving him my two-cost blocker. We don't need it. We don't need it. Uh, we need to clear up space for the bigger characters. They're going to trash Emporio Ivankov. They're going to put two cards into their into their life. And I guess they're just going to pass turn here. Maybe swing with a Flampe. I don't know what's going on. Okay, they do have a uh, Sabo in hand. Draw two trash two. They definitely have one 2k counter left in hand. Or, or the other Sabo. Very interesting. Are you guys seeing this play? And they... Oh, no. Oh, no. They finally had to get rid of a, um, a Gecko Mori because they didn't have any more. Um, they could... You know, Sabo's effect doesn't let you get around that. So I think I'm going to chalk this one up. Let me pause. Maybe the black yellow Luffy player just did not see his gecko Morias. And that is crazy considering he did a flampe. I think he did a double flampe and four Sabo searches. <laughs> and he never saw his gecko Moria. Maybe it's just bad luck, right? I didn't see. Maybe he trashed one earlier. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so now it's time to go for the board. Seven. We have a 2K, 1K to get out of this very easily. I do agree with that. I do agree. Yep, because now, now it's game over. So, Pauls, this is just a simple math win, right? Yes, our opponent is at, what are they at? Uh, they're at 11,000. Okay, hang on. So, we actually, <laughs> yeah, so we have Shariya. That's going to get one block. Why did he swing all out with these blockers? I'm so confused, guys. I mean, I am just on Confusion Island over here. I, I don't understand. If he does not block with his blockers, or if, excuse me, if he does not attack with his blockers, I'm talking about these guys right here, he is sitting behind a wall of four characters that cannot be KO'd that are all blockers. Your leader is at 11,000, so it's not like they can just swing out with their whole board, okay? They'll be able to swing twice with a kid and killer, because think about it, so he goes to seven, you'd have to give him four just to get to 11, right? So you'd have to do four and four on him, and then you could go, um, excuse me, you'd have to put four on the kid and killer, and then you would have to untap him to swing for him again. So it'd be 11 and then 14. And then you could put the remaining two Dawn on Shariah and swing for 13. That will be three blockers. And then you can actually try to win with the clap back, you know, if, if that's even an option. It might not be, but you'd have that option. But now this is just a simple matter of, okay, swing 11 with Kid and Killer. Like I said, put four on Kid and Killer, swing for 11, stand him back up. Swing for eleven. Swing with Shariah for eleven. Like that, that's all we have to do here. This game is completely over. I don't know what I don't know what happens. Yep, attack. They have to give us a blocker. They have no cards to hand. <laughs> okay, now now uh, whoa, let's make sure we do the math right. Let's make sure we do the math right. Okay. Um. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. Swing for thirteen and then sixteen. Very good. Okay. Very good. GG. So that that's game. We're just waiting for him to concede. There is no way to get out of it. All right, that was a fun one. So I have to say, uh, like I said, the only so notice this, we never used Blue No ever. It was never even something we had to use. So I think a more optimal play earlier on in the game would have been to be able to play out these Shariahs. You know what I mean? Like, wh when did we get the second Shariah? It was in our hand right here. Yeah, on this turn right here, we had the second Shariah. Let me go to when we drew it. Okay, yeah, it was off. It was right here. W whenever we untapped for the turn, we, we just didn't play out the Shariah. You know, we, we didn't need that blue note anymore. You know what I mean? We just didn't need it. Um, but anyway, long story short, you got the win. I don't have a whole lot to say about this. 
I don't know if the black yellow Luffy player just got really unlucky and like when he was doing his top five searches, maybe he was bottom decking all of his Gecko Morias, which does happen. But the fact that he went through four Sabos and two Flampes and he did not get a single Gecko Moria is just like baffling to me. And then on top of that, the way he was playing it by not blocking with his Sabos, I just... I can't, I can't get over that in my mind. Like, why would we not block out with our Sabos? Especially, there was a turn earlier where you just swung for five. I think it was this turn right here. Yep, he used that. Now watch this. Swing for five. Okay, he counters out of this one. Maybe he's trying to save his Sabo for the very end. And then he, you swing for five here. He countered out with the Sabo for the, for the Brook. He swings for five here. You have no other possible attack except your blocker, which you obviously don't want to use your blocker, right? In fact, you probably could have. The more I think about it, you probably could have because you had a 2K, 2K, 2K in hand and a little two-cost blocker. So you could have swung two more times, but either way, he could have just used the Sabo. No reason to not use the Sabo. Uh, anyway, really good stuff there. Thank you for submitting that. That was a very fun game. All right, y'all give me just one second to get set up here. i move my face camera over to here. And now we have to look at, look at some... Um, the a new starter deck coming out so all right let me go take, take the screen off there we go so guys august 16th for us over here in the west we are finally going to get our hands on 3d2y now this comes out not this friday at the time you're recording this video but next friday this new set will come out it has a lot of really cool cards in it um let me go to the i will go over to the card list and it, it's marketed you know the msrp is 12 dollars usd but and hopefully it stays at that but it's this leader right here. Excuse me. It's a 5,000 power, 5 life, mono black, straw hat crew, Luffy leader. And it has Dawn times one. All of your characters get, gain plus one cost. All of them, not just your straw hats. But then if you have a character with a cost of eight or more on the field, this leader gains plus 1,000 power. So in other words, if you have a one, if you, excuse me, if you have a seven cost character on the board and you have one Dawn attached, attached to Luffy, it does count as having an eight thousand, an eight cost character on the board where you'll get the one thousand power buff. Sorry guys, I, <laughs> I can't even talk today. Okay, now there are a few cards I want to show real quick that have some potential. Period, just like in the game. Number one is the Sanji right here. Let me uh, make my camera a little bit smaller so y'all can see better. There we go. This is a five cost, six thousand power Straw Hat Crew searchable character. On play, if you have a character with a cost of six or more, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less. So this is a five cost 6K that pops a five or less if you have a six cost or higher character. Now, of course, in this deck, there are two ways to do that. Number one is Luffy. Actually, there, are, there is more than one way to do it. We're not going to go over all of them. But the two major ways to do it is the Thousand Sunny and the Leader. Check out this stage, guys. All of your Black Straw Hat Crew type characters gain plus one cost. So in other words, if this card is down... And you play out uh, where to go, and you play out Sanji on turn on your five dawn turn. He is a he enters play as a six cost character when it checks for the on play effect. So he can just come into play and pop something, and he's a six cost character. Where it'll be, it, it will be harder for your opponent to remove them if they remove based off cost. Uh, so the thousand Sunny is really solid in that regard. This new character is solid, and then and then there's a few others. Nami, this card I think is slept on right now. I think this card is actually very very good. It is a 3 cost, 2,000 power, 1k counter and blocker. On play, if you have 6 or less cards in your hand and a character with a cost of 8 or more, draw 1 card. Seems good, right? Seems good. That's just a very solid card. Um, it's just a blocker. It's straw hat searchable. It'll be a 4 cost if you have this down. It'll be a 5 cost if you have one done attached to this guy. Uh, other than that, we do have... Uh, let, me, let me look at one more card. Nika Robin. This is the other card I think is very, very good in this set. It is a 6 cost, 7,000 power character with a 1k counter. So 6 cost, 7,000 power, and a 1k counter. And then it has an auto play and when attacking. If you have a character with a cost of 8 or more, give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 5 cost during this turn. Again, that is also when attacking. So this effect right here, it is, it is very strong cost reduction. But it does have, you know, a little bit of a stipulation on there. It has some type of restriction. So... Other than that, very solid, really good stuff there. Other good stuff in here as well, but we're not going to go through this whole list today. Okay, so that's that. Now we have to, and, and sorry, one more thing I do want to say on it, guys. Again, it comes out August 16th, okay? So that's not this Friday coming up at the time of me recording this video, but the next Friday, okay? Okay, now it's time to check out some spoilers. Spoiler warning. Don't worry, I'll have everything time stamped so you can skip right past this part if you don't want to get any spoilers. But you have been warned. Okay, first things first, guys. Here we go. Let me go full screen with this. We got Yasop. All right. 
Yasop is a red character. Oh, by the way, this is all going to be OP09. And one more thing I want to do is a shout out to all the translators over on the Discord where, where they give all these spoilers out. Um, there's a lot more than just the four I'm going to name. But the four that I'm going to name are responsible for translating all the 15 or 16 ones that we saw today. Uh, so shout out to Ray, Kai, Jenny, and um, Hitoshisu. Hiroshishu. However you say that properly, I think it's Hitoshishu. Anyway, big shout out to the translators. Thank you guys so much for keeping us up to date over here in the West. Now, Yasop. This is, and again, all OP09. Red character, 5 cost, 6,000 power, red hair pirates, 1,000 counter. On play, up to one of your leaders gains plus 1,000 power until the end of your opponent's next turn. So this is a 5 cost 6k that comes into play, and now your, your Shanks, uh, again, this is all spoiler warnings, guys. Remember, Shanks is going to be an OP09, and this is like part of his crew with Yasop. He's a 5,000 power leader that has once per turn on your opponent's attack, you can give that character or leader minus 1,000 power for the turn. So now if you play this guy down on curve on your five dawn turn or your six dawn uh, you know, turn, excuse me, you're going to basically be like a 7,000 power leader for one attack and then a 6,000 for all the others. So very, very powerful. And then dawn times one when attacking up to one of your opponent's characters gets minus 1,000 power for this turn. So it's going to allow you to fight for the board. This card is very, very solid. I cannot wait to play Shanks, guys. So I traditionally stay away from red. <coughs> excuse me. Um, even in when I used to play Magic the Gathering, my three main colors in that game were white, blue, and black, even though one of my favorite decks was white, black, red, Mardu. I liked the Esper colors, but Mardu was like another color that I was I was fond of when it was built more in a control way as opposed to like an all-out aggression burn way. So when it comes to this, you know, when it comes to Shanks and when it comes to red in one piece, I'm not a big fan of like the aggro rush whatever. However, when it's done like this, where there is some skill and counting and numbers involved and like, you know, the potential to outplay your opponent and to like to trick them and, and again to outmaneuver to outplay them, I'm a big fan of this because this will kind of be, not exactly, but this will kind of be like a red control deck and I am very, very happy about this. I'm very interested in this. Another thing about Yasop I want to point out real quick is this on play effect, it is not leader locked. Okay, and none of it, none of this card is leader locked. This is just a very strong five call 6k for anything in red. Okay, next card. All right, we got Port Goss the Ace. This is a uh, five cost, 5,000 power. I think that is probably going to be a very standard theme we see going forward in this game. Um, Ace, Sabo, and Luffy, since the release of ST13, having these five cost versions of Ace, Sabo, and, um, and uh, Luffy is going to be very important to the theme of One Piece going forward. I mean, they might venture away from it in the future, but it does have a lot of strength currently. Uh, and it does make a lot of sense, right? Because now they're supporting old old stuff by you know with the new stuff. Okay, now, Port Gosti Ace, 5 cost, 5,000 power, Odyssey, Whitebeard Pirates, 2K counter. Guys, this is a 5 cost, 5K, 2K counter. For those who have been following this channel for long enough, guess what? That is my absolute favorite stat line in the entire game. I think it is the most powerful, most universal stat line in the game. It's a five cost character, so it's not easy to just, you know, remove unless, you know, I'm not saying it can't be removed. Calm down. I know a 10 cost can be removed. I'm just saying it's not like super low where, where it's a free removal, right? And then 5,000 power, same thing. It's not so low that it's just free power based removal. Then it's a 2K counter in hand. So it can swing. It, you know, it's. I just really like this card. Now, let's read what this one does. Sorry, all that. Let's see what the card actually does. On play, if you have two or more rested characters in play, rest up to one of your opponent's cost five or lower characters. For those who are not aware, in OP09, there's a new green-purple leader named Lim. Excuse me. And Lim basically brings characters into play rested, and all of her cards are based around your characters being rested. So check this out. With this with this on play effect, if you have two or more rested characters in play, you can rest up to one of your opponents cost five, five or lower characters. Not bad, right? It's, it's not bad. It's just not insane, right? It's, it's just an incredibly useful card. It's almost going to act as like a souped up version of Ezo for this green Odyssey or green purple Odyssey uh, deck, I believe. So I really think it's pretty good. And again, worst case scenario, scenario it's a 2K counter. Really good stuff here. Okay, let's keep going. Next up, we got Sakazuki. Um, you know, that it's 
that's too crazy. We had Ace and then Sakazuki, right? But all right, we got Sakazuki, green character, six costs, seven thousand power. Odyssey Navy type. On play. This card is pretty crazy, guys. On play, if you have two or more rested characters in play, KO up to one of your opponents cost five or lower characters. Notice that their character does not have to be rested. That is a very common theme within, like, you know, uh, the green card pool. Typically, you cannot KO a character if it's not rested. This card says, I do not care. And it's going to interplay rested if it's in that limb deck, correct? I think so. I, I could be... I, I'm trying to remember now. Hopefully, I'm not messing that up. But I'm pretty sure the new Green Purple Limb Odyssey Leader makes it where whenever you play a character from your hand, or whenever you play a character, period, I guess, it comes into play rested. So it will come into play rested, and, and this will count towards that number, I believe. I could be off on that. Someone correct me in the, in the comment section uh, if I'm a little off on that. But as far as this card goes, absolutely incredible, right? This card is just sensational. It is a 6 cost 7k. It's it's even better than the 6 cost 7k that was in the black card pool where it's like trash a card from hand to pop a 5 or less. I mean, technically they're about the same to be honest. However, this doesn't make you lose a card. So in in, in my personal opinion, I think it's even better. I think it's even better than the 6 cost 7k, the uh, the original um, pop a five or less Sakazuki from, from the black card pool. Uh, big fan of this one. It makes me want to mess around with the idea of Isho again. We'll have to see what happens because that's a little bit different, right? Green, black Isho wants you to stand your characters at the end of turn. But I guess maybe that's not bad, right? Because maybe you swing with a character for the turn, swing with another character, you play this guy down to pop their five or less, and then at the end of your turn, you stand up your blocker or something like that. You know what I mean? There will probably be some potential there. I am a very big fan of this card. Very good stuff. And hey, guys, I know I didn't mention it. I didn't mention it at the beginning of the video or at the beginning of this section of the video. But if, if there's something in here that you really like, be sure to tell me in the comment section below if you're like, man, how do you think this will be with this deck, you know, or with this or that, you know, like tell me what you guys think of these in the comment section below. Okay, next up, we got Zoro. This is a three cost, 5,000 power, Straw Hat Crew, Zoro. Guys, I think Purple Straw Hat Crew is about to be the thing, right? Because at first it was Red Straw Hat Crew. And of course, yes, Red still has incredible access to Straw Hat stuff, right? But man, it looks like they're trying to shift purple to the straw hat stuff. And and I think it's a smart move. I think it's a smart move. A lot of people uh, play decks and try different decks out because of the types within that color. Well, now purple's got a lot of straw hat stuff, and it might bring a lot more attention to the color purple. And not to mention, they're also just giving it extremely powerful cards, guys. Because for those who are not aware, like how things go, how things go a lot of times at the higher up, you know, like at the the higher end of like competition. Of course, people just want to play the decks that they know are like, you know, maybe the most consistent. And what ends up happening is you'll have like 90% of the format being played amongst like three or four different decks. Well, that doesn't mean the other decks can't compete. It just means that only a few people will play those, you know, maybe because it's their favorite leader or because it's a deck they've been working on for however long. And because of that, they don't show up at the top tables as often. Because think about it, if 90% of the field is like three different decks or four different decks... The chances of those three or four different decks making it all the way through a nine and ten round tournament are very, very high. You know what I mean? And I, and I get it. I get why people do it. Th those big tournaments cost a lot of money. Anyway, I go off on this crazy tangent just to say this is Zoro card. Let's go ahead and read what it does. On play, you may return one or more Dawn cards from from play to your Dawn deck, and then set up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck into play as active. For those who are not aware, in OP09. There is a new leader coming out, Purple Black Luffy, okay? Purple Black Luffy is a 5,000 power, 4 life, dual color leader, Straw Hat Crow, of course. He has on, excuse me, he has attach one Dawn and all your characters get plus one cost, just period, as a static effect. And then he also has a once per turn effect, where if you were to return two or more Dawn cards to your, to your Dawn deck from the field, you can add two Dawn cards from your Dawn deck to the field, one rested, one active. So in other words, the way you'll do it with this with this character, and the reason it says you may return one or more Dawn cards, is you'll always choose two. You'll return two, you'll, you'll return two Dawn cards, okay? And then that will allow you to put one Dawn card into play active from this character's effect, and then two into play, uh, one active, one rested from your leader's effect. That's also important for a few other reasons as well, right? Let's say you're playing um, the, the six cost Sanji. Well, if your opponent's at 10 Dawn, and you're also at 10 Dawn, well, maybe you'll return, let me see, you'll have to return five, wait, no, four Dawn. If you return four Dawn, 
you'll gain two, three, no, no, you'll probably have to return like five or six Dawn, but the point is you'll be able to potentially cheat out a, a six cost Sanji for even cheaper. So this card, very big fan of this one, and it's a three cost. It's a nice turn three play that ramps you a Dawn and allows you to stay aggressive. I'm a very big fan of this card. I think it's very strong. And I will also do a full review later, guys. Like, of the, whenever the entire set of OP09 uh, comes out, don't worry. I'm going to do an entire set review of that. But for now, we're just going to deal with these cards. You know, just some of these cards that uh, that kind of uh, piqued my interest. Or, like, you know, they kind of... How do you say it? They popped out at me. Okay. Don Quixote Rosinante. This is a three-cost, 4,000 power character, Odyssey, Navy, Don Quixote Pirates type. That's a lot of types. It's a 1,000 counter blocker. With when opponent attacks once per turn, you ready for this? Set this character as active. I really like that. Like, I really like this card. So he's a three cost 4k with a 1k counter. That is your standard Doflamingo stat line, right? Like, he, you know, for those who are not aware, there, there's a three cost 4,000 power 1k counter blue Doflamingo. He was like the first one to really set the stage, like set the standard for like what a three cost 4k blocker should look like. And he had an effect of looking at his top five cards and arrange them. This card can be way more aggressive. It's a 3-cost 4k 1k counter blocker, but then it's basically from then on, you attach one, you attack, and then when your opponent attacks, stand him up. Now, they will be able to attack into him. Understand that. It says, when opponent attacks, once returned, set this character's active. So when they declare the attack, they're going to declare the target at Rosinante, who's already rested, and then they'll be able to go from there. So just to give you guys a heads up, I would, um, if you're going to run this card or build a deck around it, you're going to need some type of event support, potentially. Maybe some way to protect it, or some way to, you know, buff it up, or run more blockers to protect him, or something like that. Now, of course, if you're running the, if you're running this in the uh, green-blue Rosinante leader, then you'll be able to literally just protect it with your leader, and now he, sta he stands up for the next attack you can block out of. So I do think this card is very good, and it, it is very good support for... Rosinante going forward and whatever else is going to be in the green card pool. It's just an incredibly versatile, um, you know, like generically good green card. No restrictions, nothing like that. Okay, and one thing I do want to mention, that's why I also like this one. It's like they're giving support to uh, Purple Straw Hat Crew. So, it, it, you know, this card is just so good. Okay, next up we got a Searcher. I just want to show this off. I'm not going to talk much about this one. It is Trafalgar Law, one cost, 2,000 power, Heart Pirates, 1k counter, on play, Look at the top four cards of your deck, only four cards of your deck, and reveal up to two, up to one cost two or greater card with the Straw Hat Crew or Heart Pirates type and put it into your hand. Then place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. So essentially, you're not going to be able to search up any searchers. That's what they were trying to get around with the up to one cost two or greater card. So you won't be able to grab a Nami that's going to be able to grab another one of these. It's going to be able to grab another Nami, you know what I mean, or something like that. Well, I guess Nami couldn't grab this, but you get my point. You wouldn't be able to go like searcher and a searcher and a searcher or anything crazy. Uh, but it's still a very, very powerful searcher for both Straw Hat Crew and Heart Pirates. I'm a huge fan of this card. This is a great direction they're taking. Um, Straw Hat Crew going into OP09 with the new purple black leader and even the, the revamp of the ST18 purple, you know, Luffy leader for the starter, the new starter deck. Okay, really good stuff there. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, next up we got Kuzan. Now we're in the, some yellow cards here. This is a four cost, 5,000 power, 1k counter, navy card. Black, yellow, navy, is that coming in the future, guys? Is that going to be a thing in the future? I think it sure would be really cool. I feel like I'd really, really like that if that came out in the near future here. That would, I'd be a big fan of that, um, especially if it had some kind of life gain built into the leader. Okay, but anyway, let me, let, back to this card, back to the card, you know, like fantasizing about things that I hope happen in the near future here. Um, on play, you may place one of your opponent's cost three or lower characters onto the top or bottom of their life face up. And then your opponent trashes one card from their hand. <laughs> I am a huge fan of this card. Like I said, if they have a black, yellow, navy type of deck, I'm in love with this card. It Number one, it's a nice four cost 5k with an ability to bounce cards back. And if they do have a black, yellow, navy, you know, uh, setup in the future, it's going to be like, okay, I'll just reduce the cost of that card. Like maybe, maybe with a stage or something with Marine Ford. And now I'm going to, I'm going to bounce that card to your life, which is fine. I'll deal with it later, right? We're, we're in the yellow card pool. We'll deal with that later with like a banish or something maybe. And then after that, I've got this four cost 5k body. You're trashing a card from your hand. Your turn. And he has a 1k counter. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of this card. Really good. Okay. 
I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Just know that I really, I would really like for them to pursue a black, yellow, life gain, navy type of deck or life control navy deck. That would just be so awesome. It would be right up my alley. All right. We got another one here. We got Silver's Rayleigh. Everyone who follows the channel knows this is my absolute favorite character. My, my play mat, literally, guys. I mean, like, look at, look at my play mats, guys. Like, the, my play mat is in the top left corner. Of course, Silver's Rayleigh, you know, that's my guy. That's my absolute favorite character within the One Piece universe. Let's check out this new card they're getting. And it's red. So remember, guys, I was saying I really want to play Shanks. I'm hoping this fits just, you know, right at home. Or right at home in, uh, in Shanks. Silver's Rayleigh, 5 cost, 6,000 power, Roger Pirates, plus 1,000 counter. Roger Pirates, guys, are we going to get that in the near future? Sure would be cool. We'll see what happens, right? Uh, 1K counter, like I said, it's a blocker. So 5 cost, 6,000 power, 1K counter blocker. I'm sold. I'm already sold on it, right? There's only upside from here. <clears throat> Excuse me. On play, Excuse me. if your opponent has two or more characters with an original power of 5,000 or more, in case you have uh, power reducers, draw two cards and discard one card from your hand. So as long as your opponent has two 5K or, or, or bigger characters in play, draw two trash one. And it's still a 5 cost 6K body, 1K counter, blocker. I'm a huge fan of this card. And honestly, I mean, I guess some people might argue like, yeah, but what if you're doing a good job at removing the board? I don't think that's what Shanks is going to be doing. I think what Shanks is going to be doing, like, again, I'm just, I'm, I'm assuming this card will fit perfectly into the new Shanks leader uh, deck. It might, it might not. We'll have to see. However, this card is still incredible because what are the odds your, your opponent just has no characters on the board, especially on play? Like, say you went turn one, uh, like, let's say you're on the odd curve, right? Turn one, go. Turn two, they, they play something that probably won't be that big. Actually, okay, so I will say that it probably won't be something you play until like turn four or turn five, in which case you're going to draw two trash one and now you have a blocker to hide behind if you need it. I think this card's awesome, guys. I don't think it's broken. I don't think it's like insane, but I think this card is very, very good. So cannot wait to get my hands on this any kind of silver's Rayleigh card i hope they branch out and don't just keep silver's Rayleigh in the red card pool though i get it they're probably gonna have a uh, rogers pirate red card pool thing that's fine it is what it is uh, i'll accept it i'll accept it for now but in the future i'd love to see like maybe some like uh black or yellow cards that are Rayleigh. so really good stuff y'all tell me what y'all think about this one guys tell me what y'all think about all these cards in the comment section i want to know what y'all think all right we still got plenty more guys we got plenty more uh to go through frankie Purple character, four cost, 5,000 power, straw hat crew, 1k counter blocker. Okay, just no downside so far. It's, it's 1,000 power off from being a vanilla card, and it has blocker. On play, Dawn minus two. Do you guys remember what I was just saying about the new purple black leader, um, Luffy? So Dawn minus two is not Dawn minus two in this deck. It's actually, uh, it's ba it basically means this is a three cost card, okay? Uh, let me see something. Uh, Dawn minus two. Discard one card from your hand and draw two cards. Absolutely incredible. This card is cracked. Guys, guys, this is a, a controllable version of Raju. Imagine this card in Raju, actually. Like, a, imagine this card in Raju. You could literally, <clears throat> excuse me, there's like a situation where maybe you could actually Dawn minus two to, you know, and trash card, trash raise you from your hand, the five, you know, the five, K, uh, the four cost 5k raise you. So trash that from your hand, you'll draw, you know, and, and then, um, you know, draw three cards, right? One from the leader and two from this guy. And then, um, play out the two cost raise you. And if you have five or less cards in hand, cheat that card out to draw two more. It just, just absolutely incredible. It's kind of like the miniature version of queen but it's so much more practical. And remember what I was saying, guys, Straw Hat Crew is going crazy in purple now. Purple is the new color for Straw Hat Crew going forward. And who knows, maybe there will be a red purple, um, you know, Straw Hat Crew deck with the new six, call, or not with the new, but with the 6,000 power three life Luffy in the future. Who knows, man, sky's the limits, but this stuff looks really, really strong. This card, absolutely cracked, guys. I have no bad things to say about it. <laughs> like I said, because Dawn minus two, you gotta remember, guys, it's not Dawn minus two in the purple black deck, the Luffy purple black deck that it's intended for. It is literally a three cost blocker. That's what it is, right? Because what ends up happening is, let's say you have four Dawn, okay? And you play this card out and return two Dawn, you know, and, and do the whole effect, trash a card to draw two. So you, so you get so you get down to two uh, Dawn. Then your leader effect brings one Dawn back rested and one Dawn back active. So it's like it was a three cost card. You got to draw your cards from it. You have the 5k on the board now that's also a blocker. And you have one more Dawn to play with. Sit on, you know, sit on a blast breath or swing in for six. Do whatever you have to do. Incredible. Incredible card. 
Next up, okay, here we go. You guys know I'm on my red, yellow Sabo arc, right? We've got some stuff to talk about in the future, but I at least want to spoil this now because we have a lot to talk about in the future. Koala is a yellow, six cost, 6,000 power Revo army blocker. On play, you may add the top or bottom of your life to your hand. Okay, what? You may add the top or bottom card of your life to your hand. And then play up to one cost four or less Revo Army, excuse me, Revolutionary Army. Sorry, I, I abbreviate it, guys. Revo Army character from your hand. You're going to play up to one cost four or lower Revo Army card from your hand. And then if you played a card this way, draw one card. So you're drawing a card from the top of your life, top or bottom, whichever you chose. You're cheating a card into play, and then you're drawing another card. Seems good, right? Uh, yeah, I know everyone's, uh, I've had a few people uh, talk to me about that. They're like, yeah, you always say that seems good. Yeah, I mean, what else can I say? There, there's no downside, right? It just seems good. That's like old Magic the Gathering uh, lingo from back in the day. But guys, this card is just so potentially powerful. The only thing that, I, that I'm a little annoyed by, and this is just me personally because I don't, I don't really care for the Revo Army cards just yet. I'll learn to like them. Hey, I'm playing Red, Yellow, Sabo. I'm going to learn to like them, right? Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of how it is restricted to Revo Army characters because you are losing one life to cheat a character into play. That, that is just true, period. And of course, decks like Red, Yellow, Sabo can capitalize on that by just getting the life right back with a card like this if they need to, right? But my point is, you are losing a life in the process, and the fact that it's 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 stuck to Revo Army characters, it annoys me a little bit. We're going to look at another card later in the, in the video. It annoys me a little bit, but still, it, it is what it is, right? We'll learn to deal with it. You know, I guess I'm too greedy. You know, it can't it can't be it can't be like Gecko Moria, right? Where it's an eight cost that can just bring back whatever it wants, right? We got to make the six cost blocker six K. You know, only you know take a life to play out one four cost card from hand and it has to be Revo Army. Uh, anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but I think uh, a lot of people know what I'm talking about. Okay, next card, guys. Special Muggy Ball. Very cool name. This is a two cost blue event, Buggy Pirates main. Your opponent returns one of their characters with a cost of six or less to the owner's hand. <laughs> I love this card, guys. Imagine, like, I think this card is so good early in the game to just establish tempo where it's like, okay, let's just say, um, let's say your, your opponent goes first, right? They play out a blocker. No, excuse me, not a blocker, a searcher. Excuse me, they play out a searcher. Okay, we go, you know, I don't know, pl play out our searcher, right? Okay, next turn, they load up three on their searcher, attack in, and then a, then they attack with the leader. So, so we count out a one, we take one, it's all fine. All right, now it's our next turn. We play out some big card, you know, whatever we have for the four dawn curve and pass. Now, next turn, they're on their five dawn turn, right? Let's say they play out a card on curve. It is just a really strong five drop, whatever it might be. I don't know what it is. They play out a strong five cost card or a four cost card and swing for six with leader. Okay, our turn. Bounce that back to your hand. You just lost all your tempo, and I'm still gonna play out another four cost card. Or potentially something bigger, right? Or you know, or something, you know, something bigger, smaller, whatever. It, it all depends on what you're trying to do. I guess not bigger in that in that in that in that, uh, in that situation, but you know what I'm trying to say. This card I think has so much utility where it's gonna it's gonna allow you to just smash into the board, and then your opponent's gonna be stuck with like one character that, that costs six or less. And that's standing, like maybe a blocker, and you're like, um, go ahead and return that, right? Or let's say they have a bunch of cards that are like eight to nines on the board, and then they have one blocker that costs like four or five. And you're like, hey, main, my opponent returns one of their characters with a cost of six or less to their owner's hand. They can't choose to bring back the big boys. They got to bring back the blocker in that situation. I think this card is incredibly good. I don't think it's broken or anything like that, but I think this card is very, very good. Uh, really, really solid stuff here. Okay, next up. I got to move a little bit faster. I'm taking forever. I'm sorry, guys. All right, now we got Black Spiral. We got a Blackbird Pirates card. This is a two-cost Black Event counter nullify. Okay, that's basically a new concept in the game of One Piece. This idea of nullify the effects of up to one of your opponent's leader or characters and give them minus 4,000 power during this turn. That is really powerful. And then trigger, you can nullify the effects of up to one of your opponent's leader or characters during this turn, and then it doesn't have the minus 4,000. Uh, but that counter, guys, this is a two-cost 4K counter, basically, that, that allows you to shut the effects off of an opponent's leader or character and give them, you know, what's the, and then the 4K, like I said, for the turn. This is for the turn, by the way. That is one thing that I do want to mention, that counter. If this is a correct translation, and again, big shout out to all the people who did the translating, Ray, Kai, Jenny, and Hero. Um, thank you guys so much, and everyone who does the translations, and everyone who helps the community. I have to, I have to stress that. Thank you guys so much, uh, you know. But when it comes to this nullify effect, 
and that minus 4,000, imagine you're playing against a deck like Jory Bonnie, right? And they go to swing in for the first time with their, um, what's his name? Um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name. Um, ah, uh, Zora, there we go. This right here can like shut him down just completely, right? Minus 4,000 power for the whole turn, and then it nullifies the effects of that character for the turn. So then they can't stand it and stuff like that, right? And even if they chose to stand it with the one cost to like, you know, before we can even counter out of it. Okay, well, your character's now a 5k. So sure, you can get your one extra attack and then I'm just going give to give you another like 1k counter. You know what I mean? I just think that this card is extremely, extremely good. And I really want to know what all nullify entails. Because like I said, this is a term that we've not seen up to this point in the One Piece TCG. Or if we have, you guys tell me in, in, in the comment section below if I missed a card that does this. But specifically the term nullify. And I'm assuming that makes it where it's like anything on that character is gone as opposed to like effects that might, I, I don't want to get too technical. I really want to know the full uh, clarification on that term uh, nullify. But this card, guys, even if it's just what it is right here, it seems very, very strong. Cannot wait to mess around with Blackbeard as a leader. Speaking of Blackbeard, here he is, Marshall D. Teach as a kid. It looks like he's got some Wolverine claws. That's pretty cool. I do like the claws. I will say, um, as far as like ancient weapons go, those have to be some of the most ferocious weapons. Like everyone thinks of like a sword, right? Or everyone thinks of a, of a war hammer or an axe or, you know, the, you know, just, you know, a spear or whatever, you know. And and it's like with this card, you know, or excuse me, with, with this weapon, with, with the, the, the claws or the fist weapons, those are so much more personal. Because once you get up into somebody's, you know, into their face, like where you're in their personal space like that, you can't really do much with a sword, right? Because your arm goes forward and now they're up, you know, attacking you on the inside. I'm not saying that you can't deal with it. I'm just trying to, you know, <laughs> explain why I do like fist weapons so much when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, anyway, back to the card. That totally random tangent, right? And I was like, hey, it's time to speed up. I'm, I'm taking too long. Go off on like a five minute tangent about weapons. Marshall D. Teach. This character is a three cost, 4,000 power. It says Whitebeard Pirates type, right? Because this is when he was younger. So this will not be searchable by any kind of Blackbeard Pirate searcher cards. It is a 1,000 uh, count. It's a counter 1,000. Activate main. You may rest this character, and if your hand has three or fewer cards uh, than your opponent's hand, draw two cards, then discard one card. I do think this will be important for those who are not aware about what the new Blackbeard um, leader does. He trashes a card from his hand, and then your opponent cannot activate on play effects for their turn. So, so this card will probably help you catch back up if you're going way too low in like, you know, by countering out of cards and trashing a card every turn. <clears throat> Excuse me. This card should help you catch up. Who knows how effective it will be? Because I think as soon as your opponent realizes what's going on, I don't know. Let me just say it like this. A lot of the games I've seen, just random proxy games from the East running uh, the new uh, Blackbeard Leader, it seems like both character, both leaders are kind of going down in cards at the same time. But hey, if you can somehow counter out more than your opponent, then you can turn on this effect and start drawing cards and getting a lot of advantage in that way. And then he'll also act as a blocker. So there, there is a lot of upside to playing this. I think this card is very good, and it is extremely necessary for what that leader is trying to do. Okay, next. All right, here we go. Dracul Mihawk. This is a 6-cost, 7,000 power, cross guild type. With blocker and on play, draw two, trash one. Okay, draw two cards, then discard one card from your hand. The only thing this card is lacking is a counter, and for a draw two, trash one like that, I guess we're just going to have to take it. Um, I think a lot of people will, will probably compare this to something like, for example, the five cost 6k uh, queen. It's like, you know, this card's worse than that. Is It would be their their mindset, because a five cost 6k with a one can counter that draws two, trash one, blocker, and, you know, just, you just have to dawn minus one. I don't know. All I'm going to say is I do wish it had a counter. I do wish it had a counter, even if they had to make it a 5 cost 6k with this effect and blocker to give it a counter. Uh, but at the same time, this card is going to be very good and something to do with the leader effect, the, the new buggy leader. It will it will be able to cheat out cross guild cards for like a little bit cheaper. It can cheat out a, you have to pay 5 and you can play a cross guild card from your hand, right? And, and then, so in other words, it'll like reduce the cost of this card by 1. So it will kind of act as a 5 cost 7k with blocker, draw 2, trash 1. So if you look at it in that way, in that, like, you know, with that in mind, then this card is very good, right? Like a 5 cost 7k blocker with draw 2, trash 1. Who would not run that, right? That's extremely good. 
So really cool card. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of what's going on with the buggy pirate stuff. I'm not saying I won't try it, and I'm not saying it's not good. I'm sorry if y'all hear my stomach rumbling today, guys. Sorry, I must be hungry. But uh, when it comes to you know when it comes to the uh, buggy stuff, I'm not a huge fan of it. But that doesn't mean I won't try it. Of course, y'all y'all know me. I, I like to try every single deck out in the game. All right, let's keep going. All right, I think we only got two more, guys. We're almost done. Gum Gum Giant. That's it. Like just Gum Gum Giant. Uh, triple G alliteration. Triple G alliteration. Um, I wonder if that's some kind of like, never mind. I was going to say that that'd be cool if it was tied some way in with uh, GGG, Grinding Gears um, Gaming. But anyway, that, that's like an Australian company or New Zealand company that, that makes Path of Exile. Random tidbit for the day, you know, fun fact of the day. One cost, purple event, four emperors, straw hat crew, counter, dawn minus two. You may trash one card from your hand. If your leader has the straw hat crew type, give up to one of your leader or characters plus 4,000 power for this turn. Or, excuse me, for this battle. <laughs> Not for the turn, for this battle. That would have been crazy. Then draw two cards. So you're going Dawn minus two plus 4,000 for one Dawn, and you're drawing two cards from it. This card is cracked. This card, Purple is getting insane draw card support. It's, it's almost like... Like, yes, blue has a lot of draw card support, too, but it's almost like blue and purple are the draw card effect colors or something. I'll talk more about that in the future. Absolutely incredible card here. This is the best one-cost counter in the game, in my personal opinion, as long as you're running Straw Hat Crew, obviously. Really, really good stuff there. All right, let's go on to the last one. Y'all knew I was going to be holding this one till the end. Okay, y'all, everybody knew I was going to hold this till the very end. Sabo, yellow character, seven costs, 7,000 power, Revo Army with a 1,000 counter. Unlike Koala, this one has a 1K counter. On play, place up to one Revo Army type character card from your hand on the top of your life face up. Then, if you have two or more life, put the top or bottom card of your life into your hand. Trigger. If your leader is multicolored, draw two cards. Guys, this is um, this card is extremely good. Uh, I'm not. Let me say this right now. Um, I, I, I already said, I'm not a fan of Revo Army, and this is absolutely locked into the Revo Army theme. However, you do what you got to do, and of course I'm going to have to embrace that Revo Army will, will be the way to go forward. I mean, I can almost say for a certainty that it, it's even good right now. Revo Army for Red Yellow Sabo is good right now, and I'm, I'm starting to work on a, a new edition of the, you know, <laughs> of the deck with that in mind. Big shout out to uh, Mike, my guy Mike at Locals. We're always uh, brainstorming Red Yellow Sabo, literally like every day, constantly. And um, Revo Army going into OP09 is the way forward. It, it just is, right? It just is. So, and then that trigger draw to, I mean, just think about it. What you can, like, say you're at one life. Let's say you're at one life, right? Okay, on play, I'll, I'll place a Revo Army type character from my hand on top of my life face up. And then I, I don't have to put the top or bottom card of my deck or of my of my life into my hand now because because I have because I have two life exactly right or no no if you have two or more life put the top or bottom card of your life in your hand so never mind yeah if I'm at zero life then I can do this effect to gain one life and then I can put him into my life with the leader effect for one additional dawn and then I went up two life in one turn and when he gets hit the trigger is going to draw me two cards so really extremely powerful effect I'm a huge fan of this one I cannot wait to mess with this and play around with it and have some fun with it. Okay, y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. I have taken forever to do all this. Let's go ahead and knock out these games on the sim now. We've got three games to go over, and that's right. One of them is Blue Black Sakazuki. And, and oh, wait, what's that in my hand? Y'all can see, or not quite in my hand, like what I'm drawing for the turn. Okay, uh, hang on. Let me go. Volume, volume's off. Speed is on 2x, right? Yeah, we're good. Here we go, guys. Oh, oh, what's that in my hand? What is all that? That's right. This is an Animal Kingdom Pirates version. Now, I first saw this in the East, and I cannot find the video for the life of me. I was going to reference it, but I saw this in the East. If anyone knows the video I'm talking about, please put it in the comment section of this video so I can link it in, you know, I can pin it in the comment section for people to check it out. I am not the original person who came up with this idea. I saw it while just randomly scrolling through, um, you know, uh, YouTubes from the East who are, who are trying out new stuff from OP09 and whatnot. Or OP08. Okay, so I counter out pretty aggressively there because I need to get cards in my trash. I play out that page one. Did y'all see what just happened? That five cost, 5,000 power, 1k counter page one card that I just played out, that can play a four cost or lower ulti from my trash. So like ramp, just straight up ramps a character out there. Okay, so I, I grab this back. I do a top search with that new ulti. I'm filling out my board. I'm going to swing five at life. Let's see what they choose to do. And I'm going to have to pass the turn. 
just waiting on my opponent here. I'll try not to pause too much, guys. <laughs> this is going to be like an hour and a half long video. Whatever, right? It's 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 all good. Y'all will be able to hop around with timestamps wherever y'all want to anyway. <sighs> okay, let's see what happens here. So they're going to swing for six into five here. Um, I do have a 2k counter. I don't want to go too low in life, but at the same time, you know, I do have to keep some cards in my hand. Right here, swing for six. I need to get out of this one, and then they'll have a seven. I'm probably going to get out of this one too. Yep, because I'm trying to get to, you know, a 10 dawn turn where I can just plop down my Kaido. All right, watch this, guys. That ulti right there, let me pause it. Uh, I missed it. Anyway, that ulti right there, attach one dawn when attacking, bottom deck of two or less. Okay, and we are running black cards, so we can also lower the cost of stuff as well later in the game, you know, with certain effects. We'll have to see what happens, because notice I have an Ice Age in my hand as well. I think this, this deck has a lot of potential, guys. I want to know what y'all think about it. I know the game's not over, but I really like the idea of this deck. There's the page one. It can play out a four or lower uh, ulti from the trash. I'm going to swing in for five here. Now watch this, swing in for five more. I'm going to replace these two uh, little guys here, the one call, the two one-cost searchers. By the way, that's another thing. There are two Animal Kingdom searchers, Animal Kingdom pirate searchers in blue and black. You've got Who's Who and the new Queen coming out in OP08. Just absolutely stacked, right? Really, really good. So I swing five there, swing five. I'm just, this is an onslaught, right? I'm just swinging fives everywhere. And watch this, guys. Okay, play out the page one, replace that searcher. Play out that ulti, replacing the other searcher. Do a top three search and basically set my cards from there. I put those two on the bottom because I don't want to see them anymore. And next turn, look what's in my hand. You know I'm going to be dropping that Kaido on 10. Like, there, there's just no way around it. Okay, let's see what they do. Swing for five. I... I have to let them... I would actually have countered out of that, I think. I think I would have tried to counter out because I had a feeling they were going to try to uh, KO some stuff on my board, and they didn't. I was like, bro, how are you not going to play Helmeppo plus uh, Absalom or even... Uh, or maybe they didn't have an Absalom in their trash. I don't even know, but that's what I think they should have done there. Oh, I'm on a 9 dawn turn. Sorry, guys. I couldn't play out the... Um, I, c I couldn't play out the um, the 10 calls Kaido. My bad. Okay, here we go. So it's time to just smash in. I don't have another relevant play. We're just going to bash straight into him here. I think I'm going to keep 5 Dawn active and just keep repeating these uh, 5 calls, guys. This is this is just brutal, right, for my opponent. It's like, hey, I'm going to swing 5 so many times. And watch this. Once you start getting this page 1 stuff going, I think there will be an idea to maybe uh, put... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. He countered out to save the brand new because he's trying to go for lethal next turn. Um, so, so right here, watch this. Play this out. Replay. I don't have... Uh, okay. I only have that three cost ulti in my trash, but I want one of the four cost ultis. So here's the thing. I'm going to put this uh, five cost page one on top of one of those ultis to trash it, then bring it back to replace the queen, right? That's the idea here. Uh, I, th I think that's what I do this turn. Yeah, replace that one, getting back that ulti, and then I don't know why I didn't just replace the queen. That was just a strict play mistake. There was no, <laughs> there was absolutely no reason not to not replace that queen there unless I was setting it up for next turn as well. It, that was just a play mistake. I'm going to be honest, guys. There's no way around it. You guys see what I'm saying, right? I could have just replaced the queen with it. <laughs> I don't understand what I was thinking there. Okay, so 2k counter out of that if I can, because they are going to get very aggressive here. I'm, I'm going to try to 2k counter out as much as I can, so that way I can just keep this board controlled. All right, here we go. Let's see what they got. That that uh that brand is doing work this game, because, I mean, you know, he's, he's really searching with that thing. I think it's what got him his first Absalom. I could be wrong. So he pops my uh, the queen there. That's fine. I didn't need it. But that shouldn't have happened. I should have one more 5k this turn, which really frustrates me. Five into that. Five into that. It's just going to be all fives into that hog back. Five at face. He's going to take that because he couldn't save his hog back. Five more. Let's see if he drew a counter. He did. Bust out the Kaido. Your turn. I've got two 2ks and a 1k in my hand right now. Two 2ks and a 1k. I'm feeling pretty good about this, right? I'm feeling pretty good. So here we go. Nine into five. I'm probably about to lose most of the cards on my board. Oh, well. That Isho hurt the, really bad. It got a 2k counter out of my hand. That that did not feel good. But 6 into 5, I'm at least going to force this. Because I can't remember if he can attack with the Absalom or not. Yeah, he can. Excuse me. Of course he can. So I, so I just let it go. I take that. And now I have to start doing some 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 crowd control here, right? I'm not actually in a great spot. Um, draw 2 trash 2 with Sabo. I can still swing with my uh, Kaido. I'm probably going to go uh, 13 into a 9 here. And then play out a 4. And then do some uh, searching. Yep, and then swing seven into the Absalom. And then I'll play out uh, two who's who's to do some searching here. He actually counters out, which scared me a little bit. But hey, I do a, a who's who to get a 2k counter. Then I play out another who's who, get another 2k counter. I'm running a lot of 2k counters. I think I'm running like um, 12 or 14 in the deck, if I'm not mistaken. We'll look at the deck after this. Okay, I've got two life. He's got four attacks. So I just have to get out. Uh, I have to get out of two of them because I do have a Sabo as well. 
Okay, nine. I think I take this one. Yep, we'll take it. Now let's see what he does. Yep, nine, nine more makes sense. I'm like, okay, I'll take this. Now I want him to load up five on each. So let's see what he does. Okay, I think, yeah, load five there, swing for 10. So I give him the blocker here to make him think he's for sure got it. You know, at, at first I wanted to see if I could counter out of both. Can I? Because this would be 2K, 2K, 2K. No, I can't counter out of both, unfortunately, even if I use the blocker to do it. Okay, so I give him the blocker there. I make him think he's got it in the bag. Swing for 10. We're going to give him three 2Ks. My turn. All right, here we go. Now, at, at this point, it's time to just go all in. I got to swing for seven to see if it goes through. It did. So now we're going to swing for 10, and then we're going to swing for 12. GG. That was a fun one. Um, yeah, he only had a single 2K left in hand. Because remember, he was countering out very aggressively this game, trying to keep a board state. But hey, we got there in the end. This deck seems like a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. Okay, next up, we got green, yellow, Yamato. Uh, versus purple Luffy. Um, I do not believe, I believe this was uh, from like two or three. Um, we're on 1.24B currently on the, on the sim, at, you know, at, at least at the time you're recording this. I think this was like two uh, releases before then, like not even 1.24A, I think it was 1.23. Uh, that's okay. I swing for two there. He counters out. It's, it's fine with me because I'm just trying to make a delay game here. Swings for five. I actually take this. I probably shouldn't have taken that looking back. I don't know. I, I don't think, I don't know if I should have taken that, especially when he wasn't even at three life. There was no point. Swing for eight. I'm just, I'm just kind of piling on the damage right now. It's like, how many 2k counters do you have? The answer is a lot of them. And it's like, okay, Otama, we'll do a top search right here. We'll snag out the, uh, I think I grabbed the Momonosuke or the Hiyori or, or the Izo or the Izo. Yep. Yeah. And then we do a, uh, you can be my samurai draw two. If he hits me with a, uh, four cost, uh, Trafalgar law, I'm going to cry a little bit. Okay, 2K counter. It's time to start countering out of this. I, I do not want this to go on much longer at this rate. All right, let's see what they do. Swing for six. I'm like, uh-oh. Okay, he's getting a little aggressive. He's down to three life, so that is good if I do have any triggers. I don't remember what I'm running in this deck, but um, I, I do believe I'm running some um, uh, Land of Wano triggers. Could be wrong. Okay, so right here, it's like I don't really have another play. I'm like, okay, you know, what, what do I do here? So it's like swing six into six because that's what his leader's at from the uh, Eustace Kid. I get a card from his hand. I'm going to play out the Hiyori. We're going to play out the Momonosuke, pushing Otama back to draw a card. It's much better to do that combo with Hiyori, but I just didn't have the setup. Because Hiyori can set your, your life cards, and then after that, you can just push it back and do it again the next turn if you need to with, with uh, Momonosuke. But we didn't get the perfect curve there. It's fine. Not a big deal. I am running Electrical Luna. Do y'all notice the card in, in the bottom left? Or, well, I guess it's in between the Hiyoris, the, the, the two Hiyoris. Um, that card can lock down all seven cost characters. The card is actually so strong, it's crazy. So I'm just going to take that. He's got 7,000 power on his leader this turn. Swing for seven. I'll give him this in a 2K. It's fine with me. He'll probably swing eight into my... He should have swung eight into my Momonosuke, in my opinion. But I don't think it matters either way. I end up popping that card, you know, with the Onami. There might have been an argument to not do that. Like, maybe I didn't need that. Like, I could have just played out the Electro Luna and locked him down anyway. But, you know, let's just get it over with kind of thing. I, I think that's what's going through my mind right here. Okay, so let's see. I, I got to figure out what I need to do here. I don't really have a lot of answers in my hand, right? Like, I don't really have a lot. And part of me, so hear me out. Part of me was thinking, like, why don't I just go seven into life with double attack? And it go, But, but he's at 7,000 power. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I can't really go for lethal this game because it would be 7 and then 10. That's just not enough for me to go for lethal. At least not in my opinion. Nice. Then I get a carrot. That was a great card to top deck because now I can just lock down that single card rather than wasting an entire, you know, uh, Electro Luna on it. But I actually th start thinking here, like, you know what? Let me get him down to where I can just finish the game next turn. <laughs> okay. Yep. Force him into playing a blocker. And, and that, that's one route. I don't agree with it. Like, looking back, I'm like, why did I do that? But, uh, you know, because Carrot, I'm, I'm pretty sure Carrot can, can keep a 7 or less lockdown. So he's going to swing for 8 and a 5. I have so much counter power, it's not even funny, guys. Like, like look at my hand. Uh, Electro Luna, I go ahead and tap down a character. That was crazy right there. Going to go ahead and take this to make him, you know, fully commit to it. Or no, I don't. I, I counter out of this one and give him a 2K or 1K, whatever. Doesn't matter. Swing for 7. And now I can just take this, to be honest. But I might counter out. Sure. <laughs> of course. Of course I do exactly what I didn't think I should do after looking back. So right here, we'll just lock him down. Pass the turn. Your turn. He has four Dawn. There's nothing he can do at this point. There's there's basically nothing he can do. We'll give him a 1K counter. Plays Trafalgar Law. I get another um, 
I get another card here. I, I'm, excuse me, another Doflamingo. So we'll swing for 10 into him. It's going to give me the blocker. And then we'll just go 15, I think. Or maybe I lock him down one more turn. I don't even know. <laughs> hey, but one nice thing about this new green-yellow Yamato with like Landawano, it, where it's like actually Fortress Landawano style, is you have so many options in OP08. There, it's just, there's just so much you can do. So I swing five in. I play this out. We'll just keep him locked down. Your turn. Now you've got six on, and I've got two 10Ks coming across next next turn. And again, I just don't see a world where, like, I don't know what all cards are in Purple, Luffy, and uh, OP08, but what card could he play that has Rush? I don't even know why I search here. That was pretty much BM at this point. Tap his guy down, swing for 11, GG. Yeah, it's, it's just over there because he's got two, four, six, eight. Um, actually, actually, look at his hand. Actually, look at his hand, dude. He had two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. He had 11k encounter, so he could have gotten out of a 15k attack with that. That's actually pretty crazy. But don't get me wrong, I tap his guy down. He's not getting through two 11s. He can get through one 11, actually, you know, as crazy as that is, but he's not getting through two 11s and then whatever else is coming for my Yamato, which would have been like nine. So really good stuff there, really good game. Let's go through one more. We're almost done, guys. Don't worry. We got Red, Black, Sabo. Red, Black, Sabo versus Red, Blue, um, Marco. I'm starting to wonder if I had that last game on 2x speed. I'm sorry if I didn't, guys. I don't remember. I think I did. Okay, so he draws that, or excuse me. So I have that card in this deck. It's the, there's no way you could defeat me. It's like a three cost uh, way to pop a six or less, a 6,000 power or less character or a 5,000 power or less character as like a counter. It's not bad. I'm just trying it for this deck. I've got, I had an idea. And by the way, this is not like a perfected list. This is not like some insane, in, insanely good Sabo list. Red, black Sabo, of course. Uh, it still needs a lot of work. Okay, so he goes ahead. Like, and, and one thing I will say too is uh, Red Blue Marco is pretty much a straight counter to what we're doing because he can reduce the cost of our characters, and now I can't save them with my with my leader. Excuse me, with my leader's effect. So I'm not liking that. I'm not liking that. So right away, it's like, okay, well, it's a good thing I run all these rush cards because there's no way I'm surviving. So I play out Perona, make him trash a card. Your turn, put one Dawn on, and now I'm going to protect this character sorta unless he reduces the cost of it and goes about it that way. Swing for six. I'm going to take this. And notice the way I've built this Sabo list, guys. This is a an absolute aggro list. Now, what did he just play there? That's just a two-cost 2K blocker. Okay, I think that's the two-cost 2K 1K counter Revo Army blocker. So this is a Revo Army version of um, of Red Blue so uh, Red Blue Marco. Very cool. Very interesting. Um, I have not tried that. I've not tried a Red Blue. Uh, uh, the, uh, excuse me. I have not tried the Red Blue um, Revo Army version of, of Marco, but I have seen it. So swing for six, I could just block here and give him a one or just use my leader effect. Uh, but I was like, wait a minute, just in case he plays out a seven cost ace because he got seven left, I didn't do it. I probably should have looking back. Oh, well, no big deal. Especially seeing all this Revo stuff. Excuse me, I don't even know if they're running the seven cost um, Marco. Or the seven cost uh, ace, excuse me. <laughs> That's what I meant to say, the seven cost ace. But man, that seven cost ace just ruins what, Red, what this deck's doing. Okay, swing for seven. Swing for nine. Let's see if he's got it. Nope, doesn't have it. So his hand was absolutely bricked up. But I will say this too, guys. Like when you're running this kind of list where it's just straight rushers. Like notice, I think I run, we'll look at the list now. But uh, guys, this is a very, very fun deck. And I do think it will be, it will get very strong if something were to ever happen to uh, Red Purple uh, Red purple Law maybe. You know what I mean? With all that bottom decking. We'll have to see what happens. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the deck list real quick, guys. I'll try to be quick about this so we can wrap up this video. Excuse me. First up is this Sakazuki. Notice I didn't use his leader effect not even one time. So maybe, no, I was going to say maybe you could even run this through Rebecca, but you can't because, you, you know, her, her effect is even worse where you're, where you're drawing cards and you would just be trashing all the cards you want to use. Well, I don't know, maybe. Hang on. If we do add Rebecca to that list, the four cost Rebecca, and we're just trashing our cards, maybe we'll get through enough ultis and, um, and uh, page ones, and then we can start fishing the page ones out with the four cost searcher Rebecca, the four cost, um, let me show you the uh, four cost um, blocker Rebecca, We're, we can grab a three to seven cost out of, out of the trash. Now we can't play it through this effect, but we can grab it out of the trash and just play it the next turn. And we can just keep recycling our cards in that way. I think there's a lot of potential to this list. And again, I, I don't want to take any credit for this list, guys. I don't know what exact version uh, the person was running that I watched, but it was some channel from the East. It was not a big channel that I normally watch. It was something I was just randomly watching one night. Uh, in fact, I think I was like... Uh, like just uh, streaming on Discord, you know. And by the way, if you're not if you're not on the Discord, guys, sometimes we hang out on there at night. It's been a while since we hung out, but uh, we usually do that. But with school starting up again soon, it'll be hard for me to do that. Anyway, 
we hang out on Discord all the time, and um, we were just randomly going through games on YouTube, watching you know OP08 and OP09 proxy games, and we came across this deck list for Sakazuki for Animal Kingdom Pirates, and it's like, bro, this is kind of crazy, you know, like like this this is actually kind of crazy, because you have two searchers, two one call searchers, so you run four who's who, and then you run four of Queen. Pause and read these if you don't know what they do, guys. Look at the 2K counters, guys. Sasaki, he has cost reduction built in. The other Sasaki, he, he, he can fix your hand, sort of, loosely. I'm not going to say really, but... And then you have four who's who's. This card, Animal Kingdom Pirates, pops a three or less, just really strong. The only Navy stuff I'm even running in this list is actually Ice Age and Marine Fords. That's I think that's literally it. Yeah, I think that's it. Yep, there you go. Uh, and, and this ulti, by the way, is actually really insane. And this is why I'm actually running the Marine Fords. Because let's say I get two Marine Fords, right? If I play one down, and, and let's say I have ulti on the board, right? Say I have ulti on the board. She can bottom deck a two or less. The turn you play Marine Ford, you can do mi minus one to the cost. And then you can activate it to do another minus one to the cost if your leader has the Navy type. So that's minus two. We're hitting a four or less. And then we can hit a five if we also uh, toss the other one in our hand. Like I said, if we had two in our hand. So in other words... If you get multiple Marine Fords, it's actually not a waste because you can ju you can just use the cost reduction. Now, one thing I do want to say is I added these jacks afterwards. They were not in that original game. I went down minus one uh, Kaido because I was running four of them. And I went down minus one... I think I went down minus one Ice Age because I think I was running three of those. And I went up two jacks. So I didn't lose any counter power. I just went... You know, I just kind of tried to balance my deck as much as I could. Because guess what, guys? Animal Kingdom Pirate searchable. Just, just like this Kaido, just absolutely insane. I do think there is something to be said here. And hey, I, like I said, I think Rebecca would be interesting to try out as a leader. But, but here's the thing, everyone knows what I'm about to say. Rebecca can't attack this this leader can. Um, no, I don't think this is better than the old Sakazuki. I'm not trying to cope, guys. It is what it is. I'm just saying this new direction is actually very interesting and very cool. Okay, now let's try and find that green yellow Yamato deck. I'm, hopefully, I can find it. It's going to be hard, guys. I think it's is it Yamato eight. Let me see. Yeah, I think this is it. Yeah, this was the list I was running. Uh, I'll have all this linked in the comment section below, by the way. You know, like all the deck lists for anyone who wants to try these. But very cool list. Very fun. Lots of lockdown control. The Carrot is an absolute MVP. She can she can rest down sevens. And with Electrical Luna, this, this card makes it where the sevens do not untap. Okay? It just locks them down completely. Really, really good stuff there. It's got tons of draw power between the... Um, you can be my Samurai, the Hiyoris, the Otamas, the Momonoskes. This is a fun list, and it does need some revisions. Notice I'm not... I mean, I am running like four Hody Jones, but this is basically just a full Land of Wano list with a little bit of Mink support. There are other cards you can include in here and maybe take it to the next level. I'm not saying I know what they are, but this is just at least a, a nice template for you guys to start with if you are interested in Green Yellow Yamato. Okay, and the last list was Red Black Savo. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, R, it should be under RB for me. I usually do it like that. RB Savo Combo. Maybe this is it. Um, I don't know if this was it or not. You know, no, no, it probably is. Excuse me, it probably is. This is it. It's got There's No Way You Could Defeat Me in it. This was the one I was talking about. It's a three-cost counter that pops a 6,000 power character or less. Um, with an original power of 6,000 or less. So even if they buff it, they're not saving it. And then the trigger can pop a character with 5,000 power or less, original power or less, right? So it is uh, very strong in that way. It's Straw Hat searchable, but notice I'm not running any searchers in here. I'm trying to just like flood the board with all these rushers, four Zoros, two Luffy's, two, two Kid and Killer, four Dragons, just face, face, face. I'm going everything at their face, especially like Karasu and stuff like that. I've got some power reduction. And then I'm just trying to get everything back that got KO'd with my Gekko Moria. Just recursion. Well, you know, we'll, you know, the, the targets that can come back with Gekko Moria, there aren't many. For, for the four cost, you know, we have Kid and Killer and Zoro and Karasu. There's plenty of the four cost targets, you know, <laughs> uh, Borslino, Perona, you name it. But for the two cost targets, it could be improved because right now I'm only running four Koalas and four... Um, Otamas, notice they're both power reducers. I'm just trying to have full power control of the board, and then I want to hide behind my leader effect to save my characters. So that's about it, guys. Um, I have lots of, I have, I have a decent amount of uh, protection with like two rad beams and two um, bad, bad manners kit course. But I think at this point, because I'm running so much straw hat crew, uh, one of two things need to happen. I either need to double over and like go more in the straw hat package and run Nami, the searcher Nami, or I need to go over to uh, Revo Army and go more Revo Army characters. Like there, there's a few different ways I could take this. We'll have to see. You guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below if you're interested in this kind of list. 
All right, guys, that's it. That was like the longest video I've had in a while there. Let me go ahead and throw up the, uh, that didn't sound right, not throw up, but let me put up the, the play mat page. Big shout out to everybody who supports the channel. All of the, um, you know, the the people who bought the play mat. I hope it came, I hope it, uh, came on time and I hope you're enjoying it and all that good stuff. And then last but not least, of course, we got on here the VV Pirates patron page. Thank you to everybody who supports this channel. You guys are awesome. Um, well, that's it, guys. I'm done. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to put them down in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, guys. Peace.